afternoon service. How Hello. are we feeling? It is no longer a good morning. It's good afternoon. It's a good afternoon. And it Ladies is. And it is a good afternoon because you are all here today. Yes. 12 o'clock service. Best service. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. I think they're all pretty great. And we love hanging out with y'all at the Augusta campus. There's a lot of commotion going on behind us. Lots yes. of community happening on Lots Sundays, which I love to be a part Lots of. Lots of students are here. So if you do not attend any service, you're like, I wonder which one young people, young students, right? 12 o'clock. That's it. Is College, it. high school, middle school. This is the one to do it at, right? This is the rowdy one. Be a part of this one. Be a part of it. And one thing, talking about our students and elementary students as well is, They've been going back to school over these past couple weeks. Maybe they've only been a couple days or it's been a few weeks. Yeah. And what I've loved seeing on my social media feed is all the back to school outfits. Those oh. first day of school pictures. Yes. Right? Love I remember them. standing on my porch. My dad was like, you got to take a picture. It's just, it's just Ours you was have in front to. of a big green bush. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all you For 15 do. years 15 in a row. 15 years straight. Well, and then they get posted on Facebook. So keep them coming. I yes. love seeing them. But as we're going back into the school year, I thought it would be fun to do a back to school. Let's do it. I'm in. that edition. So we're going to ask you two questions. One Grab a friend. Or the other. Grab a friend. If you're online. Play the game. Drop it Don't in be the too chat. Cool. Don't be too cool for no, this game. No, do not be too cool. So, okay, so here's number one. This or that, which one did you prefer? Math or English? Neither. I was terrible at both. Oh. Um, which you know, which you've seen my my writing and my grammar have. and my spelling. I haven't seen your math, so maybe you're better at math. No, no, oh. I'm no better. I, it's like it's out. like me just putting commas at random spots to make sure it looks good and oh prepositional dear. phrases. And just and run on sentences. They run just on keep going. Sen- you can hey, a comma can keep any sentence going. That is not true. <laughs> or that is why you need colon. English. You got to figure out. That's why I surround myself with great English people. That is true. All right. Well, mine was math. Yours was neither. Maybe you had another something. That Remember, find X. You just point to X, circle yeah. X, and that's it. There it is. Oh, my goodness. Unfortunately, that was me in high school. What's our next I'm one? we got to move better. on. Oh, my goodness. Um, science experiment or art project? I love the science experiment. I love walking into science class and knowing that we were about to do, like, a volcanic eruption or okay. yeah. a fire thing yeah. going on. I had the most fun. I didn't like the lab reports that came with the experiments, but it was fun. I had a good time. I, and mine would be a science experiment as well. We would have this class that had, um, um, what's it called? Like a, I don't even know, a dish. Uh, I don't know, beats me at this I point. We built a catapult, basically, is what I'm trying to say here. Not the word catapult. Catapult. Yes. And yes. so it, mine was a seven foot catapult. Wow. Our team won, FYI, built it myself. Um, just, just saying. That's impressive. All right, here's another one. Did you play a sport or would you rather be in the school play? Both. One. I know. Me too. Both. I was in both. I Me was, too. What sport did you play? I played volleyball. Volleyball? Okay. Yep. I played basketball and baseball. Okay. What uh, play were you in in high school? I was in The Little Mermaid. All right. So much fun. And who were you in The Little Mermaid? Played Ariel. Did you have red hair? red hair. Oh, yeah. I did. It was a wig, but it was super fun. And Love it. Were you going to play in high I was uh, in Annie as Daddy Warbucks. Wow. No. NYC. All right. Cut All right. the mic. I think okay. we're good. That's just pretty good. Just <laughs> FYI. All right, good. Okay, what's our next one? That was my audition, Todd. Oh, Uh, gosh. Digital notes or handwritten notes? You know, I think they're both good, but I think handwritten notes are so important. you got to have them because you're going to remember them. If you just do digital notes, you're going to get distracted. Yep. You're not going to focus on what the teacher's saying. So handwritten notes for all the students who I know are watching right now. Pen and paper. I know it's old school, but you got to do it. Because what we know is ding, ding. Ding. All the notifications, all, all the, the notifications that get you every time. Every time. All right, one more is lunch or recess. Which was your favorite? Lunch. Really? Yeah. I preferred recess. Just I having really? a break to hang out with my friends. I was bigger in high school, and so I had to eat. <laughs> okay. Right? Too I had I had breakfast, mid breakfast, brunch, and then lunch. Okay. I had a snack in every class, so I was looking forward to lunch. Okay, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Lunch is a good time, too. That was my recess. Okay. Well, we hope that y'all enjoyed this back-to-school game, but before we jump into service, we have a few other announcements to share with you. Yeah, hey, look, so uh, this week, starting tomorrow, is our um, starting our third week of 21 Days of Prayer. Do not miss. If you have not been yet, it's okay. That's all right. Show up here at the Augusta campus or the uh, South Augusta campus because I promise you will not want to miss all that God's going to do, and especially to spend some time here at the creek 
Um, it's really, really special times put together. So 7 o'clock starting tomorrow, um, we'll be here at the church. Right, and one more special event going on on September 11th is the 5K Augusta Dream Center Run for Hope. So you can get more information if you go to augustadreamcenter.org. You can run, you can walk, or you can volunteer. Anyway, you can come and help out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, look, today's going to be an awesome day. So if you would, go on and stand up with us as we sing and worship together. Welcome to Stevens Creek. You guys doing good today? 
Man, what a great day to be in the house of the Lord and at Stevens Creek. We've got a great day planned for you. We're continuing our series called Mind Games, and Pastor Marty's going to be coming in just a few minutes with that message to conclude that. Uh, but we're going to sing a few more songs together. Those who are joining us online, thanks for being with us. Just join in with us. And what I want us to do as we sing, I want us to sing with expectancy. I want us to sing knowing that God has done great things. But he's not only done great things, but he's going to continue to do great things in your life. Whatever mountain you might have that's facing you, no matter what kind of problem, no matter what kind of situation, no matter what kind of obstacle that might be in front of you today, I believe that we serve a God that's greater and bigger and stronger than all those things. And if we can come in and to lift him up, yeah, he's going to meet us right where we are. Amen. So have expectancy as we sing today. Why don't you turn to somebody, wave at them, shake their hand. Welcome them today to the creek.
fragrance of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit saying, God, I surrender, but not only do I surrender, but I'm ready to receive what you have for me today. And we're going to pray, and we're going to believe that God's fresh wind, his fresh power, his fresh touch is going to come and blow through this place today. Those that are watching on, blow in that room that you are, that car that you're listening. So let's pray together. God, we love you so much today. And we're a bunch of people here today, God, that come from all over the place, have different backgrounds, different things going on in our but we all come to the cross today. We all come and we surrender our lives to you today. We're not holding on to any things. We're lifting our hands to, to release those things that possibly are keeping us from being as close to you as we need to. Maybe release some things that are possibly uh, blocking your blessing in our life. And we're just giving those to you today, God. Maybe it's a sin. 
Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a bad habit that we have. Whatever it might be, God, we're coming and giving that to you today. God, I know there's others that are facing a mountain that just seems too big. It just seems like there's no way that they're going to be able to get over that mountain because it's just the obstacle's too great. But God, I pray that you would remind us today as your wind blows through this place that you're bigger and you're greater and you're stronger than any mountain that might be facing us today. Any obstacle that might be in our way, God, you're bigger than that. So, God, it's my prayer that you allow your fresh wind to come and blow into our families today, God. That your fresh wind would come and blow into our marriages today, God. God, that your fresh wind would come and blow into this auditorium, into our churches, into our neighborhoods, and into our city, and into our nation, God. That all around the world, God, that you would allow your wind, your fresh wind, God, to blow. And that you would pour your spirit out on us, God, because we need you. We need you, God. And so we're going to sing. With everything that we got, we're going to believe that you're going to do this and pour out your spirit. Let's sing. Oh, we need a fresh spirit. Come on, believe it. Believe for it today. Oh, and pour your spirit out. Oh, pour your spirit out. Holy anointing. Oh, holy anointing. The power. through 21 days of prayer as we head into revival that we would come with that kind of attitude of expectant attitude that God's going to do something in us and through us amen are you ready for that you're ready for that amen amen yeah. hey thanks for singing with us and worshiping with us you guys may be seated I love that song, Fresh Wind, every time we sing it. It's just so encouraging, and it's that reminder that, hey, we all need that fresh wind that only comes from the Lord in our lives. And we know this world, there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of destruction going on right now, but that one thing that we can believe and that we are just reminded of is the Lord is in control. And so no matter what's going on, we can call on His name and believe that the Lord has a plan, and even though it doesn't make sense to us, we know that He's working yeah. in the midst of all of it. Absolutely. Well, hey, look, today, as you can tell, it's already going to be an awesome day. Um, I can sing. I'm like, you need a friend. No, I'm just, I won't sing it for you, but I, I could. Um, but hey, look, we want to connect with you. If it's your first time here, um, take a moment. I think we're going to be dropping it in the chat. We're going to um, also, if you want to fill out a connect card, take a moment, do that. Yeah. Also text the word connect to 706-222-7123. Um, take a moment and do that because we want to connect with right. you. We want you to be a part of this Creek family. And we believe that when you get connected, you'll really get to see all that we do here at Stephen's Creek Church because, you know, there's a lot coming up. There is. And we're going to oh talk about that right there's, now, there's actually. I know. Up. So, Callie, tell me about the first thing that's coming up. So, both events we're about to talk about is happening next Sunday. So, don't miss next Sunday. The first next thing Sunday. is our small group launch. Ooh. Our fall small group semester is about to yeah. kick off, and I'm so excited. Small groups are one of my favorite things. And Callie's got a, a big girl small group. A big girl small group, and it's just we're all yeah. in our 20s and 30s, we and did we a, have the a best a couple time. small group. Yes. So, and, so, and there's so many more that you can check out. Yeah. We even have a student ministry small group. Yeah. It's on Wednesdays that Dylan has up we have young adults that meet on thursdays and then literally no matter what season of life no matter your age your time a of knitting life, small group i'm sure there's one of those. no no there is oh, I, i've real? seen one 100 okay so what i'm saying is you have to be here next week we are going to have all the small groups here out in the atrium you can walk around meet the leaders see yeah. if you connect see if that's a group that you would like to meet with but if you're like hey i don't live in augusta or i'm not ready to come back to church that's okay all of those small groups will be available for you at yeah. stevenscreekchurch.com press the small groups tab and we have a huge directory that goes live on the 29th next sunday yeah. and you can browse through and figure out the best small group for you yeah, to, seriously, take a moment and do yeah. that. Um, also, August 29th through September 1st 
is our revival. So that starts Sunday night. Listen, yeah. I'm jacked up about a revival, all right? I grew up going to revivals. This is where I'm like, okay, this is where a ton of life change can yeah. happen. Friends, you've got to invite a friend. Yeah. You need to invite a friend. I mean, I, I'm inviting, literally, I invited the grocery person the other day. I love it. I was like, they're like, what church do you go to? I said, Stephen Street Church. We're having revival next Sunday. Come, Come on. Come on. I want to so, see you there. Yeah. So you invite. <laughs> it's that easy too, right? Ser no, seriously. It so, is. So invite people. Be there. You do not want to miss. God's going to move really in a mighty way. Yes, he really is. Well, we believe that. We have four guest speakers coming. And so, yeah. yes, we love hearing the speakers that are here, but they're just going to bring a new dynamic and yeah. a new, um, I think, word to all of us that we're going to really want to hear over these next four days. And so we really hope to see you there. Put it on your calendar. And yes, invite a friend. That's your challenge this week, to invite a friend. Yes, absolutely. Well, hey, look, I hope you have a great rest of the day. Um, it's going to be an awesome time. It is. Well and I have one more thing to speak oh. on before we close. I know you're excited to get into the service as we come on, come jump on, let's into do it. Let's my do it. games. But as I spoke earlier, there is a lot of chaos and craziness going on right now. And one thing that our hearts just breaking for is the disaster that happened in Haiti and yeah. that earthquake that has just swept through. And we actually received a message from a church of God in Haiti that let us know that 10 Church of God churches were destroyed. Some pastors, wow. some family members have been mm. so affected by this. And they reached out and just said, hey, is there anything you can do to help us? And so today, instead of our regular giving, we want to give to them. We want to give to Haiti. And so we have a special yeah. fund. If you want to give to that today, you can go to StevensCreekChurch.com, and it's a disaster relief, and all of that money is going to go directly to those churches, to those people, and we know that, hey, we're yeah. here in America, we can't physically go over there right now, but we know that we can send resources, yeah. we can send our finances to help those who are in need right now. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, hey, look, again, we have a lot of great things coming up, but I pray that you are blessed as we go into week three of Mind Games. Good afternoon and welcome to Stevens Creek Church. We're so glad that you're here. I'd like to welcome all those watching online. I hope you've had a wonderful week. Today we're concluding our series called Mind Games. And, uh, <clears throat> and when we think about our mind, our mind is like a computer. You know, how we program it will determine how it works. You know, you can have the best computer that the market offers. And, you know, the most powerful computer and if you have the wrong software on it, it's not going to uh, live up to par. In the same way, many people are, are not living the life they were meant to live because they've allowed negative thoughts, they've allowed bad thinking or contaminated thoughts uh, to cover them. They start believing the lies, the lies of the culture, like you'll never be enough or you've already reached your limit or um, you're not that talented. I've made too many mistakes. Just like a virus slows down a computer, wrong thinking will keep you from being that person that God's created you to be. And so that's why we're here today, and that's why we've been in this series called Mind Games. The very foundational scripture is 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Now, the big idea for this series is this. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And what we know is that our mind is a battlefield. It's a battleground. And we are, are warring against uh, so many thoughts that come uh, uh, fight against us, that really uh, fight against our own sanity. Uh, several years ago, Patty and I had this opportunity uh, to move my parents to North Augusta 
to help take care of them in their later years. Now, in those days, my mom was in the beginning of Alzheimer's. And, and some of you are dealing with this, this now. If you're dealing with someone who has dementia or Alzheimer's, it's a process. And, and what you learn is you learn how to laugh at the things that you can laugh at. Because if not, you're going to cry all the time. And so you really have to see a broad perspective. Um, at one point in the, the beginning of this Alzheimer's journey, uh, she did not always recognize where she was. She didn't recognize her house, and she didn't recognize the people that she was with. Well, one of the funny things that happened, that one day my dad was sitting at the, uh, at the uh, kitchen table, and he was putting, a, he does puzzles. He's doing a puzzle. As he is working on the puzzle, he hears something at the front door. In come two North Augusta policemen. They come into the room with their hands on their gun. Now, this guy's 80 years old, okay? And, um, and they said, sir, so what are you doing here? He said, I live here. And then my mom steps out and says, there he is. There's the intruder. And so, um, yeah, you learn to laugh at those. But it's during those kind of times that we thought, okay, this is getting beyond my dad's ability to really help and provide care. And so we took her to the doctor, and the, and the doctor prescribed um, some medicine to calm her down. In fact, uh, prescribed Xanax. Some of you know about Xanax. Now, my dad, in his 80s, he really couldn't pronounce the word Xanax, just, just couldn't understand what Xanax is all about. And so to explain it to him, we would say, Dad, these are mom's anxious pills. These are anxious pills. And so uh, we'd go through the week and he'd call us up day. Oh, I had to give your mama one of those anxious pills today. I had to give your mama one of those anxious pills. And so that was our life. You know, we live in a world that is very anxious. We live in a world that deals with a lot of stress. And stress at its very core is simply a threat. Whether it's a real threat or like my mom, a perceived threat. But it, it's real. And when your body feels threatened, then it will move into action. You'll feel like your blood pressure go up. You'll feel uh, your pulse rate increase. You'll have adrenaline that go th will go through your body. And all kinds of other physical things happen. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, stress can be a good thing. Stress can be a good thing if you're outside and you're walking across the road and you're about to be hit by a car uh, and you see that car coming and stress causes you to get out of the way. That's a good thing. But stress can be a bad thing too <clears throat> if, if it causes that negative effect on your life and on your body. And so many people deal with that. You see, it's not always what you eat is the problem, but it's what eats you. And we really have to come to the, figure out ways that we can lower the stress and that we can raise the peace of mind in our lives. And that's why we're in this series, Mind Games, because I want you to find peace in your mind. I want you to find peace in your mind. Over the next few minutes, I want to look at the, what the Bible says <clears throat> about some of the most common stresses in your life. So if you're a little tired and you're a little worn out and you're a little stressed out, man, you came to church on the right Sunday. But we're going to focus on one of the most um, familiar passages of Scripture in all of the Bible. If you're churched or if you're not churched, if you're religious or you're not religious, more than likely you have heard these words that I'm going to say to you today. Now, having said that, uh, so many times with familiar things, we just let it go right over. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to, we're going to work through this verse by verse. We're going to focus on Psalm 23. Psalm 23. This Psalm is written by King David. And uh, it was written during a period of time where King David was toppled from his throne and he was toppled from his throne by his own son, Absalom. And he was forced to flee into the Judean desert with his family and his servants. And for a period of time, David was unemployed. 
For a period of time, he was living week to week and uh, felt the pressure of being hunted and, and being hounded um, for a number of months. As he hid out in the wilderness, he, he reminisced. He thought about the days that he had as a young shepherd boy. You know, oftentimes when we get stressed and we go through periods of high intensity, we start longing for the good old days, don't we? We think back about a time in our lives that was simple, and we long to go by that. Here's the problem with that. So many times we remember those things better than they actually were. You know, they, the good old days were not as good as we remember because we had challenges then. But David was there thinking about his days as a young shepherd boy. And so what we see is this psalm is for people who are like David, who are experiencing a major upheaval in their lives or in your lives. That upheaval could be a number of things. It could be a challenging work situation. It could be maybe like David, uh, rebellious children. Uh, it could be a family um, a sickness Whatever it is that it is taking you to the place of worry and stress. In fact, worry is one of the most common causes of stress. Did you hear about the wife who woke up and saw her husband just pacing back and forth at 3 o'clock in the morning? And she said, hey, get in bed. Why are you up? He said, uh, he started wringing his hands. He said, you know Sam at work? And, yeah, I know Sam at work. Uh, well, I borrowed $1,000 from him and... Um, and I'm supposed to pay him back tomorrow, and I don't have the money. And so the wife grabbed her phone, called up Sam at 3 o'clock in the morning, and said, Hey, Sam. And he was groggy and trying to just come to terms with just the, being on the phone. Hey, Sam. He said, Yeah. He said, You know, my husband owes you $1,000. He's supposed to give it to you tomorrow. He doesn't have the money. And then she hung up. She looked over her husband, and she said, Now, you go to sleep. Let Sam worry about that money. You know, sometimes uh, we have things like that that wake us up. What are you worried about? What is that thing that has stolen your joy? What is that thing that you think about over and over and over? Well, today is a day for you to come back to the still waters, to the calm waters. Because you see, I believe that when you are at a place of peace, that you will have the ability to... Um, to think and to figure things out with the right perspective. You see, when we worry about things, so often whatever that thing is that we are worrying about becomes our God. It becomes bigger than God. See, we elevate that problem to somewhere up here that is bigger than anything that, that we have ever imagined. And before we realize it, we have taken that problem, that situation, and we have elevated above God. God's ability to work. And so that problem becomes God. And so maybe for you, it's your health, and rightly so. But the problem is, you're, that's all you're thinking about, that's all you're talking about, that you're making this sickness your God. That that sickness that you're dealing with is, uh, is, uh, has more attention than God has in your life. Maybe some of you, it's COVID-19. So many people are making COVID-19 their God. That's all they think about. When they turn on the news, it's COVID, 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 COVID. And that's all they think about. And before long, that worry about a real disease and a real condition elevates itself up above their trust in a real God. Maybe it's the vaccine. And that you hear all this stuff about get, uh, get the vaccine. Here's, here's my word to you. If you need the vaccine, you need to go get it today. Go out and get it. If you need the vaccine, go get it. If you don't need it, don't get it. Look, when I speak to you, I am speaking to some of the smartest people in this whole region. I really believe that. We have the brightest people in this region congregation. You're smart people. You can figure this out. You don't need anybody else telling you what to do with um, your life. You need to go to the Lord and say, God, speak to me, and God will open the doors that you're to walk through, and I believe he'll close the doors that you'll stay away from. So trust 
the uh, ability that God has given you to reason, to search out the information, then make the best choice, but ultimately let God guide you on that. A lot of, there's too much people, you know, there's too much shaming going on, on both sides. And so my goal today is to offend both the vaccinated and the non-vaccinated. That's my goal today. And so, rightly so, look, we're all in this together, and, and my point is this, God is bigger. God is bigger. And we forget that because we're inundated with this information overload to the point where um, we question, is it real or is it an agenda? It's real. It is very real. And it is an agenda. And so you've got both of them. And that's why you have to use the ability, the sense that God has given you. And just say, God, give me wisdom. Let me walk uh, in, your, uh, um, in your path. Okay. So I'm just saying this. Take whatever problem you have off of the throne. Maybe it's your work. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's... Uh, uh, condition, maybe it's a, a, a vaccine, whatever. Take it off the throne and say, God, I am putting you on the throne. You lead me and guide me into the paths of righteousness, okay? And so just hear that and use that same energy uh, that you're tempted to worry. Use it, turn it around and begin to thank God for his protection over you and his wisdom he's given you. So this psalm is written for people who are worried It's a psalm for people who have been shaken and people who are in turmoil. So I'm going to read it to you, and I just want you to receive God's Word, okay? I want you to lean in, I want you to listen, and I want you to receive God's Word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. In green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I, I will dwell, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is one of the most loved Psalms in the Bible and it's given comfort to people for thousands of years. When I read this Psalm, I see there are five things in this Psalm that will help us reduce the stress in our lives. Here's the first one. I want you to look to God to meet all of your needs. I want you to look to God to meet all of your needs. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, most of us run right through that uh, and listen to those words. I want to just slow down just for a moment. It begins with the words, the Lord. So just stop there. The Lord. It reminds us that God is in ultimate control of every situation. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. There's no power greater than him. The Bible says he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. The Bible says that the angels, all the angels of the heavenly host, bow down and worship him. 
Because he is the Lord. He is in control. Then you read, the Lord is my shepherd. Here we see a personal pronoun, a possessive pronoun. It denotes ownership. God is my shepherd. He is the one that is responsible to meet my needs. And David said, because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He satisfies my needs. God wants us to be dependent upon him. It's that simple. So every time you get stressed and every time you get worried, I want you to make this affirmation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. Now, I want to say that in unison out loud with you, okay? Everybody in the room, let's make this affirmation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. I want you to hear that. I want you to receive that, that the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. That's the first one. Here's the second. We're talking about five things that are going to help us to reduce stress. When you understand God's going to take care of you, boy, that just releases some stress and worry that you've got. God's got this. The second thing, I want you to obey obey God's instruction about rest. A lot of our stress comes from always being in a hurry and always working too much. When God created the universe, the Bible says that after he finished all of creation, on the seventh day, he rested. Okay, let's talk about about something. Okay, a lot of you have been taught about the Big Bang Theory. Now, let me go on record. as Yes, I agree with the scientists. I agree. I believe in the Big Bang. I believe that God spoke and bam, it was created. Really. And I'll stand there. Or boom or whatever that God spoke. And the fact is that God spoke and the heavens were formed and that he took six days to create everything. Six days. But notice what he does. On the seventh day, he took a day off. You need time to rest. You need time for restoration, recreation, and you need time to worship. He said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, and he restores my soul. Now, notice the word, he makes me. David is a shepherd, and he knows that sheep are not smart enough to rest when they're tired. So it is his job as the shepherd to make him, the sheep lie down. God has wired our body in such a way that if you do not take time off, God will make time off for you. But the point is simple. My best requires rest. My best requires rest. You're not wasting your time when you're relaxing. You're not wasting your time when you're resting. That's why God gave us a Sabbath. He said, six days you'll labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest. And I hear what you're saying. Oh, Marty, I I get it, but this is just a busy season for me. You know the truth of the matter? Every other season is a busy season for you and for me. We live busy lives. But even if you're a tax accountant during the month of April, you've got to somehow find a place of rest. You're a farmer during harvest. You've got to find some time, a day of rest. We all have busy seasons, but it takes discipline uh, to uh, to, uh, create um, places and uh, times of rest during those seasons. And when you do that, you're protecting your peace. We're talking about peace of mind here. You're not created to live worried and uptight and live on the edge all the time. And this is the reason that so many people have health issues. So many times, so many people can't sleep at night. They can't digest their food. Um, They have ulcers. It's because their mind is never 
at rest. It's constantly going. And I would say to you, whose mind is constantly racing, may the peace of the Lord come on you today. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let his peace cover you. Those of you that your mind's constantly racing because you're trying to figure everything out. And as a result, your mind racing, you're worried about this and you're worried about that and you're stressed out about this other. You need rest. The most spiritual thing that you can do today may not be going to church. Maybe today the most spiritual thing that you can do is to go home and take a nap. Seriously, the most spiritual thing that some of you need to do today is to go home and take a nap. Now, I have ingrained that into my my clock. I do that. Three o'clock today, don't call me because I'm asleep. Many of you know the story. I'm kind of somewhat embarrassed to tell, (laughs) but this happened several months ago. Um, I was on the way home. We stopped. We had lunch after church, and and I know in my mind I got to get home by three o'clock because I got to be in bed at three o'clock. And so uh, I was going down River Watch and uh, it's 10 minutes to three. I've got, I got cushion. And so I looked down at the gas gauge and I thought, okay, I'll just stop by Costco and get some gas. And so I, you know, when you go to Costco to get gas, there's a whole line of cars. And so I pulled into the line as I'm sitting there waiting for my turn to get gas, I fall asleep in the car. Now, I don't know how long I was asleep, But no doubt that the person behind me blew his horn, and I did not hear that at all. What I did hear is him get out of his car and come up to my car and start beating on the windows. And then I was startled, and I'm embarrassed and all that. And so what do you do? Do you just drive off? Well, I needed gas, so I got out and I got gas. And at that point, he looked at me and said, wow, that must have been an intense phone call you were on. And I'm thinking... No, I was asleep, and I just waved and smiled at him because, you know, I don't, need to under, I don't need to explain to him. I just preached three times, and I'm worn out. <laughs> so anyway, so for you, the most spiritual thing that you can do is take a nap. There's something about rest. Jesus said this, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. Sheep are very calm. They're very peaceful animals. They don't get upset. They don't have nervous breakdowns. You don't never see them pacing the fields stressed out. If we're going to reduce stress, we've got to introduce rest. Here's the third thing. I want you to trust God to guide you because God cannot bless a decision that you will not make. God cannot bless a decision that you will not make. I think a lot of stress comes in our lives because we can't or we won't make a decision. We're paralyzed by this. And sometimes we're paralyzed by two good options. And we just don't make a decision. Being indecisive causes stress. I recommend that you make God number one, your number one source for guidance. Psalm 23 said, He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, the Hebrew word translated paths means a well-worn trail, a well-defined, a well-worn trail. Now, the sheep need a, a trail that is laid out. But even that, they still need a shepherd because sheep have this tendency to wander away, no matter how obvious the path is. Some of you may be uncertain about your future. I want you to open up your heart to the leadership of the Lord. I want you to allow God to guide you and to God to lead you and understand that his timing is perfect, that God does not uh, come early and God is never late. But God comes at the right time. And during that process, where you're in flux and you're learning patience, I also want you to learn how to trust him with this. And trust is very easy when things are going great, but when things 
are, um, are not going so well, it is very difficult. But you've got to come to the place where you trust him. We go on. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I kind of wonder that when David is writing this, is he thinking back to what we talked about last week? Is he thinking back to a Goliath? You know how Goliath um, had the, uh, the Philistine army on one hillside? And then we talked about how uh, the Israelite army was on the other hillside. There's this valley in between. Uh, Goliath is there calling one man to come down. David steps up. I wonder if he's thinking about that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I'm telling you, over the last 18 months, the devil has intensified fear like no other time in my lifetime. And he has used that weapon of fear to try to immobilize us, to try to put us in prison, really. That, that we are so afraid of everything Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why is that? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. <clears throat> now remember, he's using this shepherding a metaphor. Shepherds always carried a rod and a staff. Those two tools they had to have. Now a rod was to beat off the... Uh, animals, the wild animals that would come to try to hurt the sheep. And then the shepherd's staff was this long staff with a, with a uh, crook on the end, and that would be to rescue those lambs that would lose their way. And so David's saying that your rod and your staff, they comfort me, that I have comfort in the fact that God is uh, holding off the enemy. God is pushing back the evil. God is uh, dealing with the devil. I think one of the important aspects of 21 days of prayer as we move into our third week is this, <coughs> that as we go through the, this season, we are literally pushing back the darkness. We're pushing back the dark. When I am praying over my family, I am praying, God, push back the darkness. Don't allow the enemy to come in we push back the darkness. I pray that over you. I pray that over our church. God, push back the darkness. God, let your rod and let your staff. And God, if we are wavering uh, out um, of your will, come and pull us back into the place where we need to be. I am in a heightened awareness where we uh, need the protection of of the Lord. God, let your divine protection cover me. God, let me walk in the center of your will. We've got to put our trust in him. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. David said, I'm going to let God be my defender. So that's the point. We need to allow God to defend us, to, to be your defender. This verse comes out of a time when David was driven into the wilderness because of his son's rebellion, Absalom's rebellion. He's out in the desert. He's weary. He is hungry. He is worn. His army's in disarray. But during this time, God prompted men who were not Israelis to go and prepare food for them and take him supplies. And so God, David saw this, that God, as a gracious host, was preparing a table for them to eat in the presence of his enemies. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here's the fifth and final one. I want you to expect God to finish the work, his work in you. 
Expect God to finish his work in you. What God has started in your life, he's going to complete it. I love the words of the Apostle Paul, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so uh, we uh, believe that God is going to do that. He's going to finish what he has started Surely goodness and mercy will follow you, will follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy. When you are walking out of church today, if you think you're being followed, could it be that if you're just right over your shoulder, there's goodness and then there's mercy and they're following you? There's goodness and there's mercy following you. In other words, God has good things in store for you. His goodness is following you. And not only that, when you step out of bounds and you make mistakes, what? There's also mercy following you. God's goodness and his mercy is following right behind you. And David said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to receive this. I want you to see your life from God's point of view, and I want you to understand that he is speaking provision over your life. He is speaking protection over your life, and that God has good things in store for you. And I just want you to receive the peace of the Lord. God's got this. This problem, this thing that is causing you to worry and fret, God has this. You've got to release it to him. You've got to trust him. Now, Jesus, when he uh, came on the scene in in Matthew chapter 11, he speaks of this. He says, come. I want you. Yeah, you come. Yes, you. You come. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, all you who are stressed out and covered in anxiety, all you who are covered in fear, come to me. And he said, I will give you rest. Hear that. God is saying, if you'll come to me, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. And notice that, learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, what is this thing called a yoke? A yoke is a tool that connects two animals together. The value of a yoke is that when it, uh, an animal is doing the job and when it's yoked with another animal, the burden that that animal carries is cut in half. It is shared. And so two animals yoked together can accomplish much more than just one single animal. Jesus is saying this to you. Take my yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I want you to learn from him and understand that when we are yoked to Christ, he is sharing the burdens of our lives. And so we've got to release that to him. He said, take my yoke and learn from me. We've got to understand how that works, and we've got to release it to him. Over the next few minutes, I want to pray over you. I want to pray over you to those that are struggling and those that are stressed out and those that are covered in anxiety. It could be because of a job. It could be because of a relationship. It could be because of the, the pandemic. I don't know what it is that you are carrying, but today I'm saying to you, come to the Lord. Take his yoke. Take that yoke. Let him bear the burdens. And if you'll do that, you will go out of here in peace. So let's stand together and I want to pray over you. (laughs) Father, in Jesus' name, God, you know every person listening to me in this room and those that are watching online. 
And I pray over you. I pray over you that you have so much tension and so much anxiety. And that tension in your life, that fear in your life is spilling over into your relationship. And as a result of that, your relationships are in peril. I pray in the name of Jesus that peace would cover you, that cover your relationship, whether it's a boyfriend or girlfriend or a a spouse. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would surrender your life and surrender this situation to the Lord and that today you would receive the peace of the Lord in your life. I pray for those that are struggling with fear. Fear is at your bedside when you get up in the morning. And as you go through your day, it seems like it intensifies. I pray in the name of Jesus that we push back the evil. I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of fear is broken over your household. Some of, there's someone here that you're so afraid that you rarely leave your household. That going to church is a rare opportunity for, uh, that you take. I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I say very clearly, God has not given you that spirit. That is the enemy. He has given you a spirit of fear to immobilize you, to keep you from being the person that he, God has created you to be. And today it stops. Today, Satan's power over your life is broken. I push back the darkness, not in my own words, not in my own abilities, but I push it back in the strong name of Jesus. We speak freedom over you. We speak hope over you. We pray this believing that it is going to take place today. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy is your name. Lord, let your peace cover and let your presence come. And God, we pray once again that we receive what you have for me. Say that. Say, God, I receive what you have for me. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's sing this out. Oh, we need a friend.
Hope to see you in 21 days of prayer tomorrow. God bless. all need that yeah. fresh wind in our life and a great way to end out that's awesome that was a good sermon. That mind was game incredible. series wasn't it yes. and so those takeaways that we need to come learn and take that Psalms 23 yeah. passage that Pastor Marty just spoke over us again and again with those five ways that we can reduce stress we know that life is stressful yeah. it can be crazy but if we lean on the Lord life is so much easier yeah and take a moment read it read it over yourself read it over yeah. your family um, that's that's a great prayer to yeah. pray and so um, but hey, look, if you made a decision today after hearing Pastor Marty preach God's word to follow Christ, let me just say congratulations on the greatest decision ever. We want to partner with you. You know, you aren't made to do this by yourself. And so take a moment, text the word to uh, decide at the 706-222-7123. Let us partner with you. Come here, be a part of a small group that's happening this Sunday. You know, get connected here at Stevens Creek Church because I promise you will not regret it. And it's the best thing that you can do for your um, relationship with Christ to continue right. to grow. We're so much stronger when we're in community. Yep. People who are building you up over and over again. So like we said, tomorrow, 21 days of prayer, 7 a.m. We would love to see you here at the Augusta yep. campus, South Augusta campus, or online. I promise it's going to change your life. It's not too late to start. Yep. Dig in, pray exactly what you need to hear from the Lord this week. Yeah, and absolutely. then next Sunday, small group launch. It's so important to be in community like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an awesome experience. Yeah. And then that night is the beginning Revival. of Revival. We have a yeah. lot coming up. We want you to be a part of it, and we hope to see you all back here. All right. Well, look, y'all have a great rest of your Sunday. Rest. Yes, rest. And we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>